In this eight part weight loss series, we'll show you in detail, including the science and the protocols, how to take all this ugly, unwanted belly fat and go from this to this in as little as five weeks. In this second part, we look at alpha and beta adrenergic receptors on belly fat and why you should really care about them. This is especially important if you want to lose that spare tire. Let's go. Did you pack your shirts? Yeah. Sunglasses and passport? Yeah. How about masks and hand sanitizer? Oh. Anyway, what are we gonna do about this? Uh, don't worry, we still got a week to go. Diet hard, low calories, we'll be fine. Oh, that's a relief. <gasps> I can't wait to go on holiday. I'm hideous! Oh. I'm Jacob. I'm Rob. This is Moby. Ah, uh, bonjour. And we are Bellyproof, an alternative fat loss approach designed to take you from this to this in as little as five weeks. We want to teach you new concepts you can use right now to get results you can be proud of. So stick with us and learn how to become In this video, we're going to give you an insight into what makes stubborn fat so damn stubborn and what you can do about it. We will also cover adrogenic receptors, brown fat, visceral fat. So if any of these sound interesting to you, keep watching. Let's start with the most crucial part of losing fat. In order to burn fat, you need to extract it from your fat cells first in a process we call fat breaking. Let's do a quick recap. This time, in the body, fat burning happens when a fatty acid is extracted from the fat cell and sent to the mitochondria to burn. But there's a problem. The fatty acids are combined in a trio and shackled to a glycerol chain, a triglyceride. They are locked up in a prison fat cell high up on Mount Adipose and guarded by the evil alpha-2 receptive monster. Luckily, a supergroup of heroines. The Sisterhood of Lipolysis. Tess. Agri. And Grimo. They have what it takes to break the glycerol chains and set those fatty acids free. <laughs> Don't miss the fatty acids burning it up live tonight at Club Mitochondria. We want you to think about two statements you often hear together in regards to stubborn belly fat. The first one is you lose fat evenly from everywhere. And the second one is your belly is always the last to go. Mm. If you lose fat evenly, then why don't you lose your belly fat at the same pace? And why is it so hard to lose that spare tire? You know, back fat, love handles, lower belly fat, moves, bingo wings, and thunder thighs. The first crucial thing to understand is how fat is distributed around the body. If you take the human body, we have our organs. Surrounding our organs is a layer of fat called visceral fat. This is often known as the deep, dangerous, hidden fat. Next slide, please. Then you have your muscles and finally subcutaneous fat. And of course, the skin surrounding everything. Subcutaneous means under the skin. It's important to distinguish the deep, dangerous visceral fat from the more visible belly fat. Visceral fat sits under the muscle. You can't pinch it and it doesn't jiggle. Too much of it is known to cause health problems. Luckily, because of its central location, visceral fat receives great blood supply. Belly fat, the type you want to lose, is subcutaneous fat, meaning it sits above the muscle and it jiggles. If you can grab it and pinch it, then it's subcutaneous. This type of fat does not receive good blood supply. The second thing to point out is that blood flow to fat cells is key to the process we call fat loss. 
you need to get lipolytic agents like our secret agents, Ramona, Tess, and most importantly, Adri, to the fat tissue. Your belly doesn't receive good blood circulation, and the same is true for all stubborn fat. Blood circulation generates heat, and this is why areas with poor circulation feel cold to the touch. Finally, you've got your adrogenic receptors or binding sites, alpha 2 and beta. We call beta receptors the good guys because they help us break fat. On the other hand, we call alpha 2 receptors the evil alpha 2 receptive monsters because they block this process. Lipolysis, or fat breaking, happens when ADRI binds to beta adrogenic receptors. If ADRI, on the other hand, binds to the alpha-2 adrogenic receptors, nothing happens. No fat breaking. The adrenaline just goes to waste. This is something that works at scale. Get more adrenaline and beta receptors and you get more fat breaking. Get more activity from the pesky alpha-2 receptive monsters, like around your belly. And you get questions like, Why do we store more fat in the belly? And where do you have more alpha-2 receptors? Yep, stubborn fat, with your love handles and your lower belly fat being the most dominant places. As a quick recap, the reason your stubborn fat is so stubborn is because it receives less blood supply and it's high in alpha-2 receptors. Let's talk about spot reduction, or the attempt to target fat loss from a particular part of your body. Spot reduction is when you're told to work on a muscle group in order to lose fat in that area. For example, it's the idea that by doing a lot of sit-ups and crunches, you can lose belly fat. It's false. You can't spot reduce fat, but you can improve targeting. If you work on your abs, for example, you would be increasing blood flow to your abdominal muscles. But not the fat that sits above them, subcutaneous belly fat. In fact, in a minute, we're going to share why the opposite may very well be true. What you can do, however, is improve blood flow to the areas you want to target, thereby improving access to that fat. You can also take steps to inhibit alpha-2 receptors and increase the chances of ADRI binding to the good guys your beta receptors. We'd love to hear what you've tried in the past to specifically target belly fat. Was it sport reduction, lemon water, or training in trash bags? Perhaps you've tried to inhibit alpha-2 receptors. Let us know in the comments below. Let's solve the problem of blood circulation. We wanted to see what we're dealing with, so we got ourselves a thermal camera. Here's the beach. Here's a nice cup of coffee. Here's Moby getting toasty by the fire. And here's the reality of stubborn fat. As you can see, it's cold. This is something we have tested many times, and it's always the same result. Now that we can see blood flow, we can hope to solve it. Mainstream wisdom tells us that exercise improves blood circulation as the skin gets hot and sweaty. Well, that's what we believed anyway, until we put it to the test. It turns out that when you exercise, where you had good blood circulation, it will now be better. But where you had poor blood circulation, it will now be even worse. That means that easy to lose fat will benefit. But stubborn fat like your belly or your love handles will now become even more problematic. This is something you can feel for yourself doing the ice, ice, belly test. Feel the temperature of your face and compare with that of your belly and your love handles. After the test, go and train, gym, run, whatever you like. And at the end, test the temperature again. We guarantee that your belly fat or lav handles will now be even colder, which means they are getting less blood. Here are six great ways to tackle this. One, heat. If you have a hot shower or a heat pack or simply decide to massage your belly, you will notice it gets warmer, at least for a little while. You can take advantage of this during rest periods between sets and give your belly a little rub a dab 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 Two, light. High-tech therapy gadgets like far infrared panels and red light therapy absolutely can help in a significant way. The good ones aren't cheap, but luckily, the sun is absolutely free. So get yourself out there. Just make sure no one's watching. Three, 
parasympathetic activity, the opposite of fight or flight. Just by taking your recovery seriously and being more mindful of slowing down, ideally between sets when you rest, you can send blood away from the working muscles and more into the subcutaneous layers. Four, clothing and temperature. Exercising in warmer climates or clothing, as well as the use of compression clothing. These do help a little, but they make exercise uncomfortable and restrictive, and therefore we don't really recommend them. Five, what helps the most with blood flow is exercise design and positions that leverage gravity. If you have your arms up, for example, your heart needs to pump the blood upwards, sending it away from your stomach. The closer you are to the ground and the more you leverage gravity, for example, resting with your legs elevated, the more blood circulation you will have around your belly. Six, topical muscle relief creams. They do generate heat and help with circulation, but we no longer recommend them for two reasons. First, they can really irritate the skin, which we found out ourselves. And second, they often contain ibuprofen, which leads to water retention, giving you the impression that you're a little fatter than you actually are. We also have our alpha-2 receptive monsters, and just like belly fat, they too indeed are very stubborn. Luckily, we have a few defenses we can use against them. Supplements such as your himbine, HCR, and or a wall sign are somewhat effective under fasted conditions to further inhibit alpha-2 receptors, but please note. These supplements are banned in some countries. They cause water retention. And personally speaking, we've had both good and bad experiences with them. So we'd advise approaching them with caution. Another defense we can use is sleep. Melatonin down-regulates the activity of alpha-2 receptors. Get good quality sleep and the activity of your alpha-2 receptors will be reduced. We have more content on the channel, specifically on this, if you want to learn more. Lastly, intermittent fasting. Fasting for a long period is a sure way to inhibit alpha-2 receptors. A 12-hour fast is okay, 14 hours is better, but longer is more optimal. Basically, the longer you fast before the workout, the less alpha-2 receptor resistance you're going to encounter. We cover this in a lot more detail in the next video about the Lion Protocol. We want to cover two connected subjects we often get asked about. These are brown fat and visceral fat. Brown fat is used to increase body temperature when we are cold. It's typically found in small deposits in the neck, top of the spine and the chest. It's not places you'd typically look to lose fat from. Brown adipose tissue and even more so browning of white adipose tissue has received a lot of attention in the last few years because people are excited about it being more metabolically active and because people are always looking to burn more calories at any given moment. Unfortunately, as we explained in our first video, burning calories is very different to burning fat. And especially considering brown fat both regenerates quickly and is not found in any place you're likely to see a difference, we think the excitement is misplaced. You can lose brown fat, but it's not gonna make a significant difference to how you look or feel. So we don't address it. Visceral fat, on the other hand, is a slightly different matter. This type of fat is relatively easy to lose, and even at a healthy weight, your body will store 10% of its fat mass as visceral fat. Consider visceral fat a health factor, rather than body fat which you can see or feel. This is because visceral fat affects your health more than it does your appearance. If you've been drinking alcohol, doing drugs, smoking, or just having a really unhealthy, stressful lifestyle for a while, it would be a smart move to improve your cardiovascular health and reduce your visceral fat. The good news is that visceral fat, whilst dangerous, is easier to lose. It's very high in beta receptors and it receives great blood supply as it's not subcutaneous. If you're following the basic principles of fat breaking and fat burning, you will effectively reduce it without even trying. If you want to take it further, after you finish your training, you could make use of cold showers. You could go sea swimming or go in the swimming pool or even jump in an ice bath. The cold exposure will move blood away from the surface area and more towards the deeper layers where visceral fat is found. If you choose to do this, progress on your visceral fat will be faster, although belly fat will be harder to target. This is a choice you will want to make based on your individual circumstances and whether you want to focus more on belly fat or the deeper visceral fat. If you found this information helpful, please share with someone you know that struggles with belly fat. And don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the notification bell for more great content like this. 
don't miss the next video in our series where we talk about nutrition, lions, and the dark side of calories. Next up, have you ever been out and about and overheard a conversation like this? I can't understand how you do it, Bridget. Eating all of this crap and getting away with it. Well, Melody, I've been blessed with eternal youth. Good genes and a fast metabolism. No, my God. You're delusional. Maybe you should train a little bit more and eat a little bit less. I mean, do you really need to eat that much lotus, Melody? <coughs> Greedy little piggy. I'm doing great, thank you very much. I've already been to the gym and done my Pilates. What magic mushrooms are you on? No, oh, don't be silly, my lovely. Here, let me order you a nice chocolate fondue. Excuse me, waiter. <laughs> After all, she's going to stay fat anyways. What?